of full time. And uh, this is how it, what it means when the pressure is on. So on the other side, Mayuka will chase for this one. And uh, still keeps it in possession. Chance for Zambia. And it's a goal! It's Imano Mayuka. And we can safely say Zambia have got it. Celebrations for Zambia. Because he never gave up. Fought for the ball. He got it. Beat uh, the goalkeeper. And just taking it to the net. Just before the end of the match. Zambia, my pride, my future. Beautiful, more nafia nature. Kontolo, kumatwini tondolo. Natusaban kanyem dila ya buntungwa fachalo. Echalo chesu after all. Freedom, te ya kutola, te kabuku chengelo. Mune, uku kwato, mutende ni chibote de manga. Zambia, ya fika, tu papalo. The spirit of Zambian people and the soccer fans, their, their spirit is very high. In this country, it's not the most difficult to get the team spirit because their focus is uh, on the same way. We are one. One Zambia, one nation. <laughs> Whenever soccer is on the high in Zambia, everybody is happy. You don't care where he comes from, what race, what tribe. Soccer in Zambia is part of our culture and our tradition. We love football here in Zambia very much. When we are watching the soccer match, we are united as Zambians. We have that same spirit. It brings all the 73 tribes we have in the country together. It has taken uh, a lot of young youths in the country. They enjoy it very much. We are one. So in terms of spirit, we are all united. Uh, that's why we are making it. <laughs> Knowing Zambia for the first time, I've won the African Cup of Nations. It was something special. When the Zambian player, footballer, wears that green jersey, with the ego here, the symbol of our national identity, immediately has been given a shirt with the ego here. He stops to be a human being. He is told, conquer or die for Mother Zambia. That's, that's what we have instilled into them. When that football player wears that jersey, and it is an ego here, I'm emphasizing that. It's a full scale movie. This warrior like obsession finally paid off with a new generation of players 19 years after the air crash. Ironically, Zambia's team won the Africa Cup of Nations in Gabon, just a few miles from where their older brothers perished. By fate. <laughs> 
Kalililo Kakonje is goalkeeper for the national team. Born in Lusaka 27 years ago, he's now a national hero, thanks in part to the team's triumph in Gabon. There were a lot of good teams, a lot of better teams than we were. But I think to me it's, it's the team spirit, the unity in the team that uh, helped us to, to go all the way. Everybody knew it was going to be like a way to pay back to, to the guys that passed on in Gabon. I, I actually told myself one time that I'm going to replace effort because I don't think there's anybody that would be better than him at that time. Yeah, so it did inspire me. I, and I think a, a lot of other people out there who love soccer. I think to me I would describe football as, um, as everything to me because I've not known how to do any other thing apart from, from playing soccer. It's shown me everything in life that I know. It's, um, it's made me a known person around, around the country. It's brought me before, before great people. It's, um, it's like a mother and a father to me. It's, it's brought in, obviously, an income for me. So I can afford to lead the a normal life, a, a relaxed life because, because of soccer. So it, it really has been my backbone in my life. Herve Renard used to play for France. After he retired, he became coach for the national team. He shared the exhilaration that the whole of Zambia felt when their team won the cup. You can imagine the day after we won this Africa Cup of Nations. It, uh, it was crazy in the country. It's still crazy. It was amazing. The atmosphere was fantastic. You know, you get a success when you have a very good uh, skilled player and uh, when there is a fantastic team spirit. And in this country, it's not the most difficult to get the team spirit because their focus is uh, on the same way. You know, a lot of teams in Africa, they have a lot of very, very good players. Some of the best players are playing in Europe, but they don't have uh, a good team because they don't want to play together. For us, there is no problem for that. That means we can fail, but the spirit is always the same. It's fantastic. It's coming from uh, the very low age, you saw some very young players to start. And if you are saying to your player when they are eight years old, uh, the team spirit is uh, very, very important. I think you alert them and uh, they are growing up with this uh, idea in their mind. They pray together. Even the Chipolo Polo, they pray every night together. We are not part of the prayer, but they are together. They build them team spirit. Renard is a national hero. We can say for the young player, you have time to be enjoyed, you have time to, to have a girlfriend, like you said, outside. But uh, there is, uh, at the international level, some uh, very important uh, appointment meeting. That means your focus has to be at 100% for the national team and uh, for your nation. Without football, Zambia to outsiders is a little-known country in southern Africa. With just 11 million people, Zambia covers three-quarters of a million square kilometers. The country is landlocked, surrounded by eight neighbors and was, until recently, very poor. Yeah. <laughs> 
In most African countries, the sporting hub is the capital city, but not Zambia. The country's economy is driven by the copper mines four hours to the north, and this is where young men go for work and to hone their footballing skills. It's the copper mines that sponsor youngsters at the start of their careers. The mines in the past used to have uh, welfare uh, places, you know, um, halls, where the people would go there and play table tennis, play volleyball. And so they became significant in developing football. And so the, most of the players, before they were able to come and play in Changa Rangers, is because they had played the local league and then they were, you know, prominent in their own. So I think the development was much more uh, sustainable and it was uh, much more um, organized on, on, on the color because of because of that. Today, Zambian football has become big business and the government has invested in massive stadia across the country. Four new ones are on the drawing board, but it's no accident that the first to be completed is here in the Copper Belt. In any open field at any time, young Zambians are preparing themselves for competitive soccer. These youngsters are frequently coached by their own peers, some no more than 11 years old. One, two, three. One, two, three. Nine. One, two, three. Nine. The village school teacher walks through literally in the middle of a game. Meanwhile, the boys don't even notice their mother, who walks by. It's this obsession that has rebuilt Zambia's footballing prowess since that dark day in 1993. Back in Lusaka, the newly completed Sporting Academy is further testament to the government's obsession with football as a vehicle for national prestige. Kick it now, kick it. Good, drop the ball. The academy starts them young. From the first day they can walk, Zambian children come here and start kicking a ball. And while in the rest of the world it might be considered a man's sport, the girls are just as keen to take part. For school-aged children, Prowess on the football field is every bit as important as academic accomplishment. My name is Jeffy Chipilingu. I go to St. Andrew School of Osaka. And uh, the first time when I came to Osaka Youth Soccer Academy, I was seven years old. Um, I like playing it because it's, it's, it's one of the ways that I can play it with my friends. We are improving because um, first we were not that good, but now we are, we are improving. We have a league here in Misaka for the under 10, under 12 boys. So every weekend, Saturday, Sunday, they normally meet here to play their games. And at the same time, they are, most of them they are from these uh, neighboring schools. So like today, we, it's, it's, uh, we made a program. So at the our national team coach, we normally passes here to see the program for these boys. From the under 14, there are about five boys have been picked been under 15 national team, which are, they are yet to travel to go and play Botswana in December. When I'm, I finish school, I want to go back again in the pitch, continue playing, because football is my life, and I want to become like Leon Messi. Yeah, maybe I can do more than Messi that I can do, yes. I want to be a star. I like Calaba, I imitate Calaba because he's a young player. Even me, I'm, I'm young. 
and I want to be playing football. And I love it, it's a passion. I know school is important, but football is all my life. But for some, Zambian football still has a long way to go before its best players scale the heights of their dead predecessors. Of the players that won the Africa Cup finals in 2012, Zambian players, not even one of them will be among the best 11 Zambia has ever produced. I'm telling you. We had Ifod Chavala, my team of Rira Wanderers and Zambia in Goa. He was uh, not highly educated, but he used to practice playing football in what we call in a game of soccer, off-season. I would give that on to shirt number one for Zambia. So he died in the plane crash. Dick Chama, Green Buffaloes. Ha! Huh. A killer, a soldier, to all intents and purposes. Five, Dixon Makwaz. Six, Richard Stevenson. Seven, Johnson Bwaja. Eight, Charles Msonda. Nine, Godfrey Chitaro. Ten, Samuel Zumunjovu. Eleven, Kalusha Bwaja. So speaks Dennis Lewewe, outspoken commentator and football pundit for the last 50 years. Dennis Lewewe is a legend of our time. Uh, when Dennis Lewewe came on the radio, he was commenting from Morocco, he was commenting from Egypt. First of all, we'll give you the background. So you exactly know, you, you know, in, in your young fantasy. When we were young, there was a moment that you, start, you started to think that, hey, maybe one day Dennis Lowe would say my name. Kalusha Bwalia's fantasy was realized, and he became one of the first Zambian players to play for European clubs. Now retired, he's become responsible for the success of the younger crop of players. The Karusha Bwadias of this world are now in football administration. They saw it through as footballers. He saw it through as a coach, and now he's in administration. Bwadia's early life could be that of any of today's youngsters, a life in which football alone holds the key to fame and fortune. Anything that I can remember back then has to be associated with school, going to school or playing football. So it was, uh, uh, there's no two way, uh, no other thing that you, we used to do in those days um, because it's longer than five years or six years, I think. Coming into the national team, I was privileged to come into the team around the, in 1982. The trials are, were held in Indola and so we went there. We're all looking forward to be part of the team. So you sit on the bench and then there's two teams playing and then they give you a run, run out for 15, 20 minutes and you have to show everything. So I thought I did myself justice, but uh, they said, hey, you're too thin, man. You can't go to <laughs> too young and too thin. You can't go to the, to the Africa of Nations. Africa of Nations, you have to be strong. Hey, you know. August, September, then we had other trials. And so I was successful. I think the first trip was uh, to Egypt, but I didn't play then. I was just uh, carrying the bags and I was very disappointed I didn't get a chance to play. So I said to, you know, the coach could see my face. I was, I was upset, you know, I've been mean, come all the way and I said, hey, I could have destroyed these guys. But now I'm sitting on just warming the bench. So the, the coach then said to me, no, don't worry. I know you're disappointed, but you are the future of Zambian football. You will play more games than every, everybody who has played today. You know, and I just walked away and I said, ah, okay. <laughs> We did a very good job together uh, between 2008-2010. At the end, we reached uh, the quarter-final of Africa Cup. We lost uh, in penalty against Nigeria. We also reached the semi-final of uh, Chan 2009. We finished third. That means it was the first step of uh, the success. I left for a short time, and I was lucky to to be called back by the President Kalusha Bwala. And uh, you know the story in uh, February 2012, we won the Africa Cup. It was uh, the resume of uh, my stay in Zambia. But it's, uh, it's a very good country to be coached. I think I'm lucky to be on the right place on the right time. And today, if I look at our team, when we played against Ghana, 
the amount of people who have come to the stadium. 41,000 people in the stadium against Ghana. And then you say, yes, the people, they are wearing their shirts. Everybody is wearing a green shirt. And, and so there must be belief. If you go on the street, for every five person that you see, you see somebody in his national color. You see Hevrena on the, on the poster uh, somewhere, you know, saying something. And, and, and I think that is good. Um, you can believe in, in the vision of, of, uh, of our team. We can believe as a Zambian that we can conquer the, the, the world. So um, we have to sustain that. We know we are on a good way. That means this is a process of uh, building something. When you are building a house, your house is not finished in uh, one week. You have to go step by step and uh, sometimes it's uh, more difficult. Sometimes uh, it's very fast. Mister, why you are not going to help him? Oh! I can be a very hard. Uh, you can see this example. We start a camp with the local players. Three were late for the, the report and I don't have to be nervous in front of them. I just explain if you don't run to go to the national team, you are not motivated enough. That means I don't need you. We need the player to be proud to, to see the flag of Zambia in the air. This is the most important. The future of the country's football is in the hands of the Football Association of Zambia. Over the last four years, it's gone from a loss-making institution into a highly profitable business, raking in millions of dollars in merchandise and international gate receipts. How many African parastatals must look at them with envy? We have um, the good capable people, we have good brains who have come together and, and everybody is you know, driving in the same, same direction. There's a lot of good ideas and uh, there's a lot of experience. Um, and also, you know, the Football Association is always looking for other ideas outside. to have a, a fantastic stadium now. That means we, uh, we have a bright future in this country. From tragedy to triumph in 19 years. The story of Zambian football is an African success story. Having won the Africa Cup of Nations, Zambia's national team is looking to scale even greater heights. From 1993, I always live a day, out of a day at a time and try and enjoy myself while I'm still here because, you know, life um, uh, is precious, but um, you don't know. Uh, what uh, what tomorrow can bring? I'll still support Zambian people. I'm proud of being Zambian, actually. The spirit of Zambian people and the soccer fans, their the spirit is very high. Polo Polo, one love. We are one. One Zambia, one nation. <laughs>